those watching that this is Learning Lab on uh, Tuesday, uh, October the 2. October the 2. <laughs> it's Halloween. It's not Halloween. It's Halloween is a month long activity. There's nothing called Halloween anyway. It's Halloween. <laughs> <Okay>. What? <laughs> okay. Never mind. We're on number. We were on 32. The one with the graph. All right, everybody ready? 32, the one with the graph. It shows the relationship between mass of a number of rubber stoppers and their resulting weight on some far off planet. The slope of the graph is a is a representation of what? So what do you think that is, Sophia? C, acceleration. I mean, they can see acceleration due to gravity. You're all right. And so we will move on from there. 29, a 50 kilogram student stands on a scale in an elevator at the instant the elevator has a downward acceleration of one and an upward velocity of three, what would the scale read? All right, what do you have for that? Cold. B. How many put B? 450 newtons. You are correct. Okay, I got 440. I did. Yeah, I got 442. Well, but it's approximate. I said B. That's like the right. So if you put a 9.8, you just did 10. But I put the wrong one. Wait, so I just got. I kept on redoing it and doing it differently sometimes, and I always got 440. There's person on the elevator. Here's the weight scale, and so free body diagram is mg and normal force. And what you need to know about elevators is the normal force is the reading of the scale. We've talked about that before, but I'm emphasizing it. If, if you want to know what does the scale say, it's not going to read mg. It reads how hard it's pushing up on your feet. So the normal force is the reading of the scale. All right. In this problem, what you know is that acceleration is negative 1 because it told you it has a downward acceleration. That doesn't mean the elevator is moving down. Which way is the elevator moving? It's going up because it says it has an upward velocity of three. So velocity is positive three. So the elevator is moving up, but doing what? It's slowing down as it moves up. Slowing down gives it a negative acceleration. All right, with that in mind, to work the problem, you can say the sum of all the forces equals MA. And the sum of all the forces are just these two. There's a normal force up and there's mg down. So normal force minus mg. And that's equal to m times a. And uh, this person's mass is 50. You were told that in the problem. So, the, so, wait, what was the actual question here? The scale reading. So normal force is what we're looking for. And that's going to be equal to 50 times a, which is negative 1 plus 50 times g, which is 9.8. And if you calculate that, you should get the answer. What does that come out to be? Does that come out to be 450, or at least it rounds off to 450, is that right? Okay. Everybody see what we did? You did have to, to make the a a negative one because it said the acceleration is downward. Okay, that's how you do number 29. Uh, now, the free response problem. Let's go to that. I have put on the TV up here. I don't know if you folks at home can see that or not. But I put on the TV the, the first part of the free response problem. Here's the situation. 10 kilogram mass, 5 kilogram, 10 kilogram, all attached to a rope. Well, there's a rope here, and there's a different rope here. Now... What I told you is that the tension has to be the same everywhere in a rope. But these are two different ropes, so they don't have to have, to have the same tensions. But the tension is the same everywhere on this rope, because that's all one rope. Okay, so I'm just letting you know that. Now, free body diagram on the, the 10 kilogram block on the incline, that would have mg straight down, normal force at an angle perpendicular to the, to the surface. The tension, and I call it tension A because that's rope A, uh, is that way. And then friction, but and then friction is back this way because the assumption is this 
This would, would move down and these would move up. Okay, if you actually had a problem, anything like this on a test, you would probably be told, because you might look at that and wonder, well, I'm not sure which way it would go. Well, well so you'd probably be told. The, the 10 kilogram mass over here is gonna fall down, which means those fall up. That way you know friction is in this direction. It opposes the motion, all right? For the five kilogram, it's kind of the same thing, except it's got mg, normal, and tension b. There's rope b. It, but it's also got tension a. See, that rope's pulling back on it. And it's got friction in that direction because it's still sliding up. So it has all of those. And then the free body diagram on the hanging one just has the, it's not touching any surface. There's no normal force. It's got mg down and tension from rope B up. Uh, when you start working problems, remember the tension in rope B, there's a tension in rope B, those are equal, it's the same rope. But tension in rope A would be different from rope B. Okay, any questions about the free body diagram part? Now, B said to find the acceleration. So, part B, I think, is right here maybe. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that or not. <laughs> so, and I just did this to save time so I wouldn't have to take all the time to write it on the board, so I don't know if you can see it. But the acceleration is gonna come from the sum of all the X forces equal MA. Okay. X forces though now mean, X forces now mean um, all, the, all the forces See, it's like this, there's a pulley there. All the forces along the direction of motion, we've talked about this for a pulley. So my x-axis now is this, and then it bends and it's that. And if you know this weight's gonna fall down, then that's, that's the positive direction over here, and that's the positive direction here, the direction it's moving. So the x-axis is this big thing here. So when I do that, so all the X forces, it's all the forces that are parallel with the plane, and then over here that are parallel with the vertical. So that's what's listed here. All right, here are all the forces. There's negative friction, that's that. There's negative 10 times 9.8, that's, um, oh, I'm sorry, times the, the X component of that, that's this mg, but it's the x component of that. And if you remember, x component would, would be, if that's mg, the x component would be this right here, that thing right there, which is gonna be mg times the sine of theta. But right here, I just put mgx. That's negative because it's in that negative direction this way. And then there's negative friction on the five, that's this one. And then there's negative 5gx, that's the x component of that mg. And then there's, there is, uh, now notice I left out the ta and this ta because they cancel each other out. The t is for tension. This tension a here is, is positive. This tension a here is negative. They're the same tension, they're opposite direction, so I just left them out. Okay, moving on, the next one is the 10g. That's this down force, it's positive because that block's moving down, positive direction. And again, I took out the tension B and the tension B. That's the same rope, that's a positive T B and that's a negative tension B, so they cancel out. So I didn't write them down here. You could write them down and mark them out like we did before. So these are all the forces that don't cancel out, and they have to equal the total mass of the whole system times A. If you add up all the masses, you get 25. Now, if you wrote that down, you've done most of the physics. The rest is just do the math and come up with A. So you plug everything in, and you come up with 0.47. Anybody get 0.47 for part B? But I'm confused about what you did here. Yeah, that's... Okay. For friction... Remember that friction is mu, the coefficient, times the normal. Now mu was given in the problem as 0.1, I think. That was yeah. good. So you know what mu is. The normal force, though, let me draw this. 
the the normal force is this, right? Well, that's equal to this mgy because that's my y-axis now, and it's, and it's not accelerating along the y-axis, so the sum of all the y-forces is zero, and that's the y-axis, so the up normal has to equal the down mgy. So that's why I'm here for the normal force I put mg cosine 30. That's this. That's this M, that's this y component of mg, okay? Because it's adjacent to the angle, so I use cosine. So that's the point one is mu, and then the ten times nine point eight is mg times the cosine of thirty. That's friction. Everybody see how we got friction? And then next is minus ten g x. Well, that's the minus ten times g nine point eight. But the x component is this one. It's opposite the angle I know, so you use the sine for it. Sine of 30. How'd you know it's 30? Uh, well, we told it's a 30 degree, degree angle. Yeah, it was 30 degree angle. Okay, oh, that was in the problem. Yeah, so. Then after that, the next thing is minus friction for the five, minus this friction, and there again is mu, 0.1. There's the mg for the five, it's five times g. And cosine 30 because, again, this would be equal to the normal force. The mgy would be equal to the normal force. So, and it's adjacent to the angle, so use cosine. That right there is the friction from the 5 kilogram mass. Okay? Point 0.1 mu. And all of this is the normal force. 5, 9.8, cosine 30. Why are you multiplying 10 and 9.8? Why 9.8? Like, why, why it's multiplying the other? Uh, it, because friction is mu times the normal force. Oh. And the normal force is mg times the cosine of 30. Mm -hmm. So you multiply all that to get friction. Then after that, the next thing after friction was this, 5gx. So minus 5g, and the x component is sine 30. Again, that's the x component, opposite, so you sine. And then the last thing here is just plus 10g. So plus 10 times 9.8. And that equals 25a. That's how you plug it in. So it's just all the forces acting in the right Yes. Just take your free body diagram and take all the forces that are parallel with the plane until you get over here, then those are included as well. It's everything along the, the direction of motion. Put all those forces in there. If you did, you would include the, ten the tensions, but the tensions would cancel out. If you really put all the forces, you would have the tensions in there as well, but they would cancel out because there's there's an opposite direction. So, can we go over the problem again? <laughs> this? Like, this problem we just went over? Mainly just like, I still don't understand the plugging in part. I understand, you understand the first friction, but do you understand, understand this part? This line, did you you okay yeah, with? Yeah, because it's really just like adding. You're just all adding up all the forces. The x. On okay, the, x. the plugging in part is you have to know how to plug in for friction. I That's mu that. times the normal force. Okay. And you have to know the normal force is equal to mgy. Okay, I, I understand that part. And then the the uh, ten the negative mgx. You need to know the x component is this because it's parallel with the plane, that's x. Yeah. And that is mg times the sine of theta because it's opposite the angle. So you okay. sine. When it's adjacent to theta, use cosine. When it's opposite, use sine. Okay. And that's what, that's what this is with the sine in it. Okay. So that's it. You're either, you're either using the x component, use the sine, or you're using friction where you use the cosine. Now, that, there's a whole lot there. That's what, I, that's what I was saying. These are all things you should know how to do, but, but you have to do all of them in one problem. That's what makes this problem kind of hard. Once you've done that, you've got A. I think the, the well, I do want to go on to C to show you how you would do it. But okay. any more questions about part B? Mm -hmm. How do you find the acceleration? 
Everybody okay with that? All right, the last page, I'm going to flip it to that now. And that would be, I think, this. There's part C at the top that's kind of cut off a little bit, and part D. All right, so part C says find the tension in rope A. Now, if you want to find the tension, you can't do what we just did because all the tension's canceled out. You can't take the whole system, in other words, to, to find the tension because if you do, all the tensions will cancel out. You have to take just one mass. So remember that whenever you're asked what's the tension in the rope, you've got to go down to just one mass, and you're still saying the sum of all the forces equal to ma. Now this marker is not working very well. I wish I had just a bunch of great markers and we were just lying around waiting for you. Brand new marker, it's never been used. You think it'll be good? Sum of all the forces. That's not too bad. Okay. All right, so now we're going to take one mass. And what I took was the uh, 10 kilogram mass that's on the plane. So here it is. And it's got mg, and it has normal force. We, you've already done the free body diagram. And it has tension. Uh, Wait, okay, what's the question here? The question is for rope A. And rope A was that little rope down here, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, it's got tension A, and then it has friction back this way. But it's accelerating that way. And then here are the components of mg. If I want to say the sum of all the x forces, I already wrote it there, and x is this, my x-axis, equals ma, then, then the first thing I do is list all the forces that are along the x-axis. Okay, well those would be tension A, uh, I know I wrote TA, but it's the same as FTA. Tension is in the positive direction, that's the direction it's moving, but I have two forces in the negative direction. There's minus friction, but there's also minus MGX, and it's down here, but don't forget about it. It's still parallel with the plane, so that's an X force. So minus the X component of mg, and that has to equal in that. So that's how you're going to find the tension, and that's what I did here. There's negative friction, negative mgx, positive tension in A, and that's all adds up to ma, and m here is 10. We're just dealing with the one mass for this problem, so that the tension will cancel out. And once you've done that, you're plugging in numbers, friction again, same as last time, it's mu times the normal force. Same thing you had for friction in the last problem. Normal force is equal to mg cosine 30. So it's equal to mgy. Over here you have the x component of mg, and that's mg times the sine of 30. That's this thing. And then here you have the tension in A, which was what you're solving for. And then it's equal to MA, and you now know what A is, is whatever your answer to part B was. But we know that should be 0.47. So if you plug all that in and solve it for TA, you'll get 62 newtons. Okay, that's how you get. Now again, this is more complicated probably than anything you're going to see on the test, because there's so many different things. You've got a whole bunch of stuff to add up there. But you need to know, if I need to find the tension, I've got to zero in on one block. And get the sum of the forces just on that one block, not the whole system. And then I'll have a tension I can solve for. It won't cancel out. Okay? And the other question is find the tension in row B. So for that one, I chose um, the hanging block, I think. Yeah, for the hanging mass. For the hanging mass, there are only two forces, see? There's tension in, in B, and then there's mg. So you could do it with the other, the five kilogram mass, but this one's easier, there are only two forces. Let's do it the easier way. So these two forces add up to ma. That's what we did here. The sum of those forces, those vertical forces on the, the hanging mass, the sum of those forces is equal to ma, and that's what I did here for the hanging 10 kilogram mass. So some of the forces would be mg 
down, but down is the positive direction that it's moving down. And then the negative direction is tension in B, where it's pulling up. And that's equal to MA. The only mass we're dealing with is a 10 kilogram mass, so M is 10. A is still four, uh, 0.47. You plug all that in, you get tension B is 93. Okay. Now, before we leave that, I want to show you something. Before we leave that, you just found, well, if, well, you did, if you had the right answers, you just found that, here it is, you just found that the tension in that rope was 62 newtons. You found the tension in that rope was, what did we just say, 93 newtons. Could you have guessed? If you knew that was 62, could you have guessed that's going to be 93? This rope is pulling 10 kilograms. This rope is pulling 15 kilograms. All right, now, now that's, that's going down, but, but how much is it pulling up the incline? This one's pulling 10 kilograms up. That one's pulling 15. It, this should be one and a half times as much, shouldn't it? That is about one and a half times as much as 62. So you can still do that. Okay. All right, any questions about the practice test? All right, I want to do one more pulley problem just for practice because I think maybe we haven't done enough pulley problems to really let it sink in. Done Let's try one that's not on an incline plane this time, it's just a pulley. Let me pull, put this back for our friends in uh, wherever they are. They're somewhere that's more important than AP Physics right now. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so let's say you have a pulley with hanging masses like this and like this. And over here you have two kilograms and there's two kilograms. And over here, you have one kilogram and a, and a one kilogram. I'm just making this up. All right, when you let go of it, it's going to move, isn't it? What's, what, what direction? These are going to go down, and these are going to go up. So you know it's going to accelerate. Remember what I told you is that one of these, either that or that, is always true. So one of, the, one of the first things you'll do when you work a problem is ask yourself, well, which one? Well, it's going to accelerate. That's going to go down. That's going to go up. So it's this one we're working with. Okay. <coughs> Since it's a pulley, what do you think the x-axis is? It's this whole thing. Yeah. It's like you took your x-axis and you just bent it. So that the positive direction here is up. I'm sorry, the positive direction here is down, isn't it? How do you know it's down? These are going to move down. What I've told you is the direction of motion is the positive direction. So on this side, down is positive. On this side, though, up is positive. That's all the same direction for the system. It's the, the whole system is moving in that direction. Okay? All right. So if I say now I'm going to let the sum of the x-forces be ma, you tell me what I need to write here. Now, before we do that, let's do the free body diagram. Yeah. Don't skip the free body diagram. All right, Sarah, don't skip it. What are you doing? All right. No, I don't like that red one at all. All right, I'm over here. Am I in the way? No. Nope. This is mg where the M is 2. Can I write 2G? Yep. Okay. It's MG, but the mass is 2. And up here, there's what force? Tension. Tension. Tension in this rope. Yeah. Okay. Here, what force? And that's all that's acting on that mass. Would you agree? Yeah. I didn't draw them to scale. Yeah, maybe I did. Because it's going to be accelerating down, so that one's longer than that one. Because it's accelerating down. Okay. For this one... It, there are two forces down. What are they? Gravity. 
One is the mg, which is 2 times g, and the other one is what? Tension. Tension. The same tension as that one. Now, when we do the whole system, can you see they're going to cancel out because they're opposite and equal. It's the same rope. Okay. What's the up force over here? The tension in this rope, which is different. Yeah. It's different from those tensions. Okay. That's all there is. For that block, there's its weight, that tension in the rope under it, and then there's tension in the rope above it. Okay. When we move over here, there's mg, which is 1g, it's only mass of 1, and there's that tension in this little rope over here, and then there is tension up this way. Now, I'm not labeling the tensions, but maybe we should. I'll call this rope A, so that's tension A. They're going to cancel each other out. We'll call this rope B, so that's tension B, and that's tension B. They're going to cancel each other out. Because this one is negative, that one's positive. Same rope. Okay, and then on my last weight down here, there's a 1G, that's the, the weight of that object. And then there's tension up here, which is tension C. Those are going to cancel each other out because they're equal and opposite, same rope. All right, do you see that we got all the forces drawn? And then now when I go over to here, because that, there's so much stuff there, this looks complicated, at least I know I can leave out all the tensions. For the whole system, you can omit all the tensions that are going to cancel out, and that'll make it a little simpler. All right, now tell me what I need to start with. Let's start over there. What would be the first thing you would write? 2G. 2G. Is that positive or negative? Positive. Positive. It's going to be moving in that direction. What's another next thing I'd write? Another 2G. Is that what you said, Sophia? That's what I said. These tensions cancel out, so I'm going to leave them out. So the next one is this 2G for this mass. It's down. Okay, what's, and it's positive because down is positive over there. It's the direction it's moving. And then there's a minus what? 1G. Force of tension B. This is tension B, but that's also tension B, and they're going to cancel each other out. So I'm going to leave those out as well. You could put them in and mark them out, but that's okay. So what's the next one I need to put? 1G is over here. Now, is that negative? No. Or is it positive? Oh, it is. This thing is moving up, isn't it? So for over here, up is positive. So yeah, 1G is negative. 1G. All right? These tensions cancel out. I'm going to leave them alone. And so all that's left is another negative 1G. Now, that's the sum of all the X forces when you take out all the tensions because you know they're going to cancel. So it's not quite as complicated as, as it was. And G is 9.8. Okay. What goes over here on the right side of the equation? Six. Which is a, MA. What's the M? Six. The sum of the, to the total sum of all the masses. Masses don't have a direction. It's scalar. So it's just you add them up. Two and two and two. Six. Everybody see where, where we got six? You added up all the masses. Yes. Now you just solve that for A. You get the acceleration of the whole system. Remember, G is 9.8. So you can do that. I don't. I just made this up, so I don't know the answer. Maybe somebody could tell me. Um, 3.26. Yeah. It's really yeah. 3.26. four minus two. It's two G divided by six. What's the answer? 3.26. 3.3. Or two seven yeah. if you round. If you round it off to two digits, 3.3. Is that right? Meters per second squared. Now, do you see how we did that, everybody? Okay. The point here is you learn how to treat the whole system as one thing, put it all into one equation. You learn how to wrap the x-axis around the pulley and still think of it as the direction it's moving is positive, so the opposite of that is negative. You have to get the signs correct or you'll miss it. Okay. Then, if you co I come along and say, well, I'd like to know what is the tension in rope A. That's this little rope over here. It's not the same as that one. I want to know what it is here. I need to do what? 2G minus tension. 
I need to pick one mass. Which one would be the easiest one to pick? This one right here. It only has two forces acting on it. So I'm going to do the sum of all the forces equal for just, just for this one mass. All right. So let's say that was part A. Now part B is what is the tension in that little rope part, the rope A. So I'm going to say the sum of all the forces uh, is MA, but just for this one mass. All right. Still, the direction it's moving is positive. So I've got positive 2G and negative tension in rope A. This little string here is rope A. And that's got to equal M times A. Now, can I solve that for tension? Yes. Yes, I know everything. What is the M this time over here? What is two. it? Two. It's just 2. Right. We, we're just dealing with one block this time. So that would be 2 times 9.8 minus the tension is equal to 2, <coughs> and A we said was 3.3. .3. All right, so what does that come out to be? It's something like 20 minus 7, so 13, I don't know, what is it? I got 13. 13? Everybody getting 13? Yes. Okay. 13 newtons is the tension in rope A. Now, we can do the same thing for rope B. In fact, we're going to do that. But what if I had said to you, hey, take a shortcut and tell me what's the tension in rope B? Wouldn't it be the same? You just found the tension in rope A was 13. Would B also be 13? No. No? no. Would it be more or less? Less. More. Would more. Rope A, rope A is only pulling two kilograms, whereas rope B is really pulling four kilograms, isn't it? So would it be twice as much? But it's but rope B is also doing the other two. But isn't rope B? I thought we were getting four from. Um, All right. What? Tension in rope B is the question now in part C. It's not the other two. The other two weights. What? The other two what? Let's yeah, let's do it the same way we did this just to show. We're going to isolate this block this time. The sum of all the forces on this block equals MA. All right, so those forces are uh, 2G. Down is positive. That thing would be moving down. Um, minus uh, or plus tension A. Now see, tension A doesn't go away, does it? So plus the tension in A. But we know what the tension in A is now. But it doesn't go away because tension A and tension B are not the same. They don't cancel each other out. So I've got to put that in. And I'm not dealing with that thing. So, so it's just these three forces you put into your equation. So I've got 2G plus tension A, both positive, same direction, minus the tension in B. Minus the tension in B. Minus because it's the opposite direction from motion. So it's a negative. And that's equal to MA, and the M this time is 2, and the A is still 3.3. .3. Now, we know everything here because we know tension A. We know tension A is 13. So you solve that for tension B. That would be 2 times 9.8 plus 13 minus the tension B is equal to 6.6. .6. All right, what does that come out to be? 26. Could you have guessed it would be 26? No. I yes, because it. it's pulling twice as much. It's pulling twice as much as this more. one, exactly. So I'm showing you, can, you, that's the way to do it, where the sum of the forces equal MA. But if you know this one has a tension of 13 newtons when it only pulls 2 kilograms, this one is pulling 4 kilograms, it should be twice as much. Okay. And it is. Yes. Are we not considering rope B to be carry to hold all the weights? It's not pulling one. Well, this this vector I'm pointing to is just the tension pulling these up. So I know I see what you're asking. You're talking about it. It really does go over here too, but but we're not including that mass in the equation. We're using we're just talking about all the forces on this one mass. And, to find and that really does work. Tension. Why does that work? Okay. Why it, does it, it, it's, 
It's all one rope. Yeah. The tension can't be more here than it is there because then it would. So it's be something just to know how a rope same. could do that. What? It's always the same. Yeah. For one rope, it's the yeah. same everywhere in that rope. So See, that's a different rope down here. So it's different. But for this rope, it's the same everywhere. Okay. So those right there would cancel out, just like those right there would cancel out. Okay. Yes. All right. Finally, if you're asked to find the tension in C, could you guess right now what that would be? Half as much. No. Would it be go to, Would it go back to 13? No, it would be half, like this one? Uh, half of 13. Are you sure? Uh, half of 13? <laughs> I think it's... Uh, it why be, not? It would just be... It would just be pulling uh, the one... So what do you think this is without doing without doing it the same way we always do? You think it'd be thirteen? Yeah. yeah, half a thirteen. I think it's maybe half a thirteen because it's pulling half. Five. But it's <laughs> forty-five. Six point five. <laughs> okay, let's see. Forty-five. Yes. I the sum of all the x forces equal ma, but now the x forces are just on this one mass right here. It's the easiest one. It only has two forces acting on it. Tension C, which is what we want to know, and Mg. All right, the tension is positive this time, tension C, because it's up, and that mass is moving up. Direction of motion is positive. 1G is negative, it's down. All right, so tension minus 1G, 1 times 9.8, is equal to Ma. That mass is only 1, and the A is 3.3. Okay, what does that come out to be? 3.3 plus 9.8 is what? Okay. 3 plus 10? Isn't it about 13? It's 13.1. Okay. What? See, it comes out to be the same as it was. It, 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 you might have gotten 13.1. That's because of the rounding. But if you if we round off our answer to two digits like we've been doing all along anyway, you get the same tension here that you had there. Why? So really, we just have two tensions. The, because, look, the tension up here, we said, was uh, 26, didn't we? Mm -hmm. we what well, we said was, that's 26, but that's the same rope. This has to be 26 also. If that's 26 pulling 2 kilograms up, this would have to be 13 only pulling 1 kilogram up. It should be, it should be half as much as that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was okay. like a big All right. If you really, if you really grasp all of this, you're good. You're good. Well, I always say I, I get it after classes, but then I do the homework and I don't. Oh, all right, hold it. We have about ten minutes Who, now. I don't want to just do something now. You tell me what question you have. Okay. Our last ten minutes. Oh, gosh. So, okay. Can we do something that has to do with weight? Has to do with what? Weight. Weight? We do something with the earth. We have to we have the earth. Or another planet. Wait, will we have to know capital weight? I don't know. You're talking about this equation here? Yes. Yeah. Woo! Let's go over there. Hi, Claire. Hey, Claire just now walked in. She didn't think this class was very important. I'm just kidding. Stop. All right, weight. This is the force of gravity, which is the same as weight. You need to know this is a universal law of gravity, which means it works anywhere in the universe. The G constant, you would be given that on the test uh, if you don't remember it. But that's that's good anywhere in the universe. This capital G constant is universal constant. Like, okay. like so what do you want to know? Six something What's the times ten to negative eleven. Is that the right? One? Yes. Okay. Right. Something like that. Six. Okay. No. What do you want to know? What's the gravitational constant? 
What is? Who has been given that on the table? Like, can you do like? Yeah. But I want to know. Like, is that like six point six seven times ten to the negative eleven? It was like the satellite is it's rotating around the Earth. There's a satellite going around the Earth at some distance from the center. You want to know what is the weight of the satellite? Oh, my satellite. Oh, my God. Up there. Is, would that be on the test? Okay. Is that one of the videos? No, wait, 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 wait. If you're just going to plug in numbers, you'd need to know the mass of the satellite. And the mass of the Earth. Do something that's on the test. You're trying to find the magnitude of acceleration due to gravity. Sick. Oh, okay. It's 3.5 magnitude. We should do a different way. Okay. No. No. MG is equal to g mm -hmm. over r squared. Well, wait, do Why the is thing it? where, like, the two planets are attracting each other? We're doing this one Maybe. right now. <gasps> but here, this one first. If you want to know what is, you want to know what is g at some height way up above the surface of the planet, Earth. mg is always equal to weight. And g m m over r squared is also equal to weight. Both of those equal the force of gravity, so they equal each other. And the point now is the mass of the satellite can cancel out. So the m that's left is the mass of the Earth, which you can look up, or if you had it on a test, you'd be told what is the mass of the Earth. And you'd be told what the g constant is. You, I never have said you had to memorize that. Um, the r is the distance from what to what? in this problem. From the center of the Earth to where the satellite is. So if they tell you how high it is above the surface, you've got to add the radius of the planet to that. And whatever it is is squared in this equation, right? Okay, so whatever that distance is, you just plug in here. Whatever the mass of the I don't know these all these numbers, but yeah. That's how you'd solve it for G. Can we plug in some numbers just to do it? Wait, 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 wait. You cross out which mass? What are you asking? You cross out the mass. Mass of the satellite. Mass of the satellite. That's the mass of the object times G is the weight of the object. So the mass of the object we canceled out, but the mass of the planet is still there. Okay. okay. Um, and so they give you. Yeah. All right, the mass of the planet Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. Okay. <laughs> um, the capital G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. And the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the 24th. And the R is whatever this distance it, it is. Okay, the actual radius of the planet Earth is, is 6.38 times 10 to the 6th. Um, what? I mean, that's just the radius of the planet. This R in this equation has to be the total distance from the center all the way to the satellite, which... That could be anything. Well, how, so it's three. Okay, okay it's wait. Do you square the radius and then add the distance, or add the the radius plus the distance and then square that? Or would that be the same thing? <laughs> wait. So what are you asking? That the do we radius square the radius? The place? Yeah. Well, and you, then well, add you, the distance, or do we? No, no. Add add it up. This whole thing from here to here is R in this equation. Can you put a, can you put a number so add it all together and then square it. Like All right, I just made up a number. I added them together and got that. How? Can we figure out how to find it? Because that's my problem. Well, this question was, what is G uh, up there? But to find it's not 9.8 up there. It's something else. Okay, so can we next find radius? If you're trying to find R, you'd have to be given G up there. Oh, it's always given? Of the Earth. But, well, then what, but, but then there, there's the rest of it from the yeah. planet. This, this number I gave you is a distance from the center to there. So you could calculate all that and get G at that point up in the sky. It'll give you G and you'll just Anybody done that? I found the... Oh, no, I did it for a different thing. I, sorry. Okay. I don't know. I just made up this R, so I have no idea what the answer is. Oh, square. Okay, wait, hold on. Yes, yes. I got this. 
How do you reset the calculator with Claxton? Yeah. So if you find G, what is it there? What was it after that? You didn't know the math. No. Oh, okay. So you have to answer like, uh, Define lowercase g, the acceleration due to gravity. I found the yeah, You do this. So what's your question now? If you found find the mass of the object. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, let's do that. If you want to know the mass of the objects, then remember the force of gravity is equal to mg. So... If you know the actual weight of the object, you have to know either the mass or the weight, Got it. or or g. There are three things there. If you know two of them, you can find the first. Yes. So what is gravity? <laughs> what? what is oh, it's not the same. If you just do r squared as the radius of the Earth, and then do the mass of the Earth to g, it's nine point eight because that's exactly. Earth. Yeah. I just did it, and it's nine point eight. That's, so it works. That's true. The equation does work, doesn't it? Yeah. If it hadn't been for Claire, all of that work done by all those scientists would have just been. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Bell's going to ring in a minute or two, maybe. Wait, what's the answer? Yes. Do you have a screwdriver? <laughs> Probably. Do you have one that would fit in there? Oh, you're trying to repair your calculator. I'm going to turn this off. See y'all later.